Hey, it's Jason from Bohemia Bees. We're in the honey house and we're going to do a video on how we prepare for an upcoming honey show. We're going to be attending the uh, Hive Life Conference here in January. Uh, that conference is put on by uh, Cayman Reynolds. This is their second year and there's a, there's a honey show they're doing and uh, we don't really participate in a lot of honey shows. We've done a few local honey shows. Uh, it's not something that we uh, really uh, desire to get involved with too much. Um, some people get really competitive in the honey shows. Uh, and there's lots of videos out on YouTube on how to prepare your honey uh, to compete in the honey show. We've watched a lot of them. We've read a couple books just to see if we're kind of meeting muster with uh, putting our uh, entries together. But we're going to show you how we uh, prepare our honey for the honey show coming up here in January, uh, just so you can see. Now, when you're preparing any entry for a honey show, we've read that you really should do it within a week or two before the show so that you know all of uh, if there is any remaining uh, particulates within your honey uh, that could show up to have time to settle uh, and you have a chance to have that one last pass at making sure that your entry is perfect uh, wanting to go in I mean it's really just about how the honey presents it's uh, usually measured by uh, different categories right so you should check with the conference or the honey show rules that are presented um, I know that uh, we'll put a link in the description below uh, to the entry form that, that's going to be used at the Hive Life Conference so that you can uh, take a look at that as we go along. But there's different factors that you need to look at uh, when you're, you're trying to get a good entry uh, in a honey show. Right here I have a lot of the components that we're going to use to probably get us to that point. Uh, and I'll have different pieces of the video that will show you how we use each piece. But just to kind of give you an overview of what we've, we've uh, put together, we've got a case of uh, what they could call clean line jars. These are glass jars with lids. Uh, these, these are used typically in honey shows. You wanna make sure, first and foremost, that those jars have been cleaned, uh, and we'll do that. We'll clean and sanitize and dry them. There's no, there shouldn't be any moisture in them. Your, uh, the lids that you're using, this just happens to be a silver or a gold lid. We're using the wide mouth style queen line jars that you see over here, uh, and they're the white lids. It's just a different style uh, to use I, don't, I prefer the metal over the plastic. It's just what I prefer uh, for the entry. Uh, and then as well, the jar needs to be cleaned and sanitized free from any dirt, debris. Uh, they're gonna see that, right? They're gonna look at that jar, they're gonna put a light through it, and they're going to see if there's any floating micron, you know, pieces of hair or tiny little molecules or stuff that should be, shouldn't be in that jar of honey. Uh, when you are selecting the honey to go into your, uh, your entry, you want to select your best honey, right? So you want to select, um, there are different uh, grades or colors of honey. You have a, uh, a clear or what they call a light honey. You have a light amber, uh, and then you have an amber, right? So those are the three categories, and you can see in the uh, description or, or the chart that I have here to my right, that's the uh, typical uh, way that you would judge to determine what entry it falls into. If you're kind of in between, uh, you want to lean more towards one or the other, whether it be the lighter here or the, the darker towards the bottom uh, and, and the amount of um, uh, type of type of nectar source that's created that honey. Uh, now they're gonna look at naturally the clarity. Uh, they will do a, a taste on it. They will do other things uh, to look at that jar, make sure the jars are in good condition. You know, we select, we buy a case of jars, right? If we only have, you know, one or two entries, you wanna make sure that you bring uh, at least three per, uh, Per category, if you're going to enter in all the categories, such as your clear, light amber, and then amber, uh, we're going to do that this year. We're hoping to have three different grades of honey to be able to enter. I've not entered that many in a competition before, but I'm going to make sure that I have at least four jars prepared uh, to do that. Why? Because you know you want to make sure that when you get to the uh, conference, if one fell over or got dinged in the corner of the lid or something just doesn't look right, you can pick your best three entries uh, and then you can enter those. Uh, we naturally have a series of strainers here that you see. Um, we're going to, uh, these are different strainers that can be used to pull the particulates out. You know, likely we won't use all of them, but I'm just showing you that, you know, we're going to definitely strain our honey, right? So we want to make sure that you at least get as much of the particulates out as possible. You might even have to go down to, you know, a, a 200 or 300 micron mesh, right? That's the, that's that smaller, finer mesh that's going to get those smaller particulates out. The standard strainer that you strain honey with. This is about 1800 microns. This lets the bigger uh, or the small particulates through, but it'll let the, 
the bigger pieces or catch the pieces of wax or any of the, you know, the B parts and such that fall through when you strain your honey. And it goes down to about a 650 micron uh, metal mesh. That's the traditional strainer that we sell and that we filter our honey with when we process our honey. We like to leave some of that pollen particles in there. Uh, when you get down to 200 uh, microns, you are filtering some of the larger pieces of pollen potentially out of it, or at least some of the, the things. It doesn't you know, change the honey dynamic, but it does pull a lot of that out. Uh, naturally, you're going to need a scale. Um, one of the things that uh, that you know people are always question is just what weight am I putting in this jar? Well, in a clean line jar, these are designed to put a pound of honey, right? So that's a pound of honey that's full all the way up to the top of that lip below the, the top of the jar, right? So you want your honey to not show any airspace. Um, you don't put it up to the bottom of that lip because then you have that airspace where the lip is. You put it below the lid and just above the top of that lip, that last lip will now give you what you should fill it to. Um, naturally, you want to weigh that jar, zero it out, fill it till it gets to a pound of honey. If it needs to go slightly above that lip just to give you your pound, great. Um, but at that lip, you should not go below that lip. Um, but that jar is designed to give you a pound of honey, but that just gives you a double check to make sure that what you're putting in there is at least a pound. They probably will weigh it to make sure it's at least a pound of honey. Um, if it's too significantly over, there may be some suspect there and they may disqualify it. Um, they'll disqualify you for uh, things like major dents and things on the lids. Uh, you know, any kind of uh, the moisture is important as well. So uh, they will look at your moisture to make sure the moisture content. We're going to use a refractometer to make sure that our moisture is within range. Um, and we can you can see that within the link, the description for this particular honey show. Um, they will disqualify you if your moisture content is too high or too low. Um, if it's over, I believe, 20 percent, they're going to disqualify you uh, between I think 17 to 20 percent or higher. It's, it's uh, is a disqualification. Anything below 13.9% is also disqualified. You kind of have to be in between that range of around 17 and 14 is really we ideally. Most of our honey is because we typically only cap, we only typically uh, process honey that's fully capped. The bees make sure that they keep that uh, moisture level at a consistent above 14, below 17, which is that ideal place for it's not ferment as well as store it forever. Um, that's why bees do that. Uh, so. We've got all our, pull, our parts here. We're going to go ahead and show you some steps in the process of how we do this, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So stay tuned. Okay, so what we've done is we've started to strain our first batch of honey. We've selected probably several, about a gallon and a half, which um, there's typically about uh, 12 pounds in a gallon. So we use half this uh, to do our five or so um, pounds in this bucket. We're going to zero it out just so I know how much I have in here so I can kind of get an estimate. And we're gonna pour it through a... So I naturally want to pour a little bit more to ensure that we have enough to do our four pounds. I'm just allowing the honey to strain through the micron filter. Typically when it's colder, it, it, um, it takes a little longer to filter through, but I can hear it dripping so I know we've got, I know we've got it. Here we go. So now we're at five pounds or four pounds, 15 ounces. It'll go through. I'll put a little bit more in. There we go, we're over five pounds. I only need four pounds, but I'm just putting enough in to allow this to strain through this evening. This may take overnight to strain all the way through, but once it goes through those two strainers, there's a 650 that's really not doing anything because it's on top or it's below the, uh, the 200. But the two 100 micron mesh is really what's doing the heavy filtering, and that will help us get the level of filtering that we want. Well, as I look at this, this looks closer to a lighter amber, so we're going to have to see. We're going to pour our next batch out of our other um, bottles to see our other vats of honey and see what we can come up with if we can get a different color. Stay tuned. 
Okay, we've selected our second uh, pick of honey. This is our pumpkin sunflower honey that comes late in the season towards the fall. It's definitely a lot darker than what you saw in the other one. This is what it would look like. Again, this is sort of a light amber in here, and you can see the difference between the two. Um, I'm hoping to get a clear here shortly out of my other, uh, but we'll have to wait to see. But we're running these things through two micron filters so we can uh, bottle them up. And we'll do, uh, go ahead and select our next batch. Okay, we've selected our light amber uh, honey and we're just pouring it again through the strainer to get any of the remaining particulates that could be in there, particles that we don't want to see in our, our pour. And we'll continue to uh, let them settle. We've got our other two behind us of our dark amber, and we also have the clear or light amber. We're hoping that that meets muster for the clear or light. It may not. We'll have to see when we get to the uh, judging stationer. But we're going to continue to do this process until we've uh, gotten all three buckets filtered, and then we'll move along to the next step. Okay, so we've got our three entry buckets prepared. They've been strained through uh, a very fine micron strainer. You can see we've got a sort of a, a light uh, amber, amber, and then a dark. Uh, I'm thinking that this may be too dark to enter, but we're going to see. We're going to mix up, bottle up all three uh, for the entry. Uh, we'll move on to the next step, which is uh, glassware. Okay, so let's talk about glassware. Um, again, you're going to use a queen line jar or a clear jar or something with a flat side. Um, this is typically what we've talked about. Um, this is a wide mouth jar. Uh, we've got the white metal lids. Uh, what you want to look for in a jar is naturally when you present it, you're going to want to polish it off. And we'll talk about that as the final presentation step. But we're going to go ahead and select the jars that don't have any visible defects in them. I mean, if you look at this jar, it looks like a pretty clean jar. There's no defects on the side. Um, I'm still going to look for something to be a little cleaner than that. And one of the little things that, that I've done in the past and that other show participants have taught or mentioned to me was if you open up a case, he said, look for that jar that has the stamp ring centered, right? So probably giving a little tip away here. But if you take out like two jars, for example, and you look at these two jars, you see how that, that one's centered and this one's off-centered? This could indicate that when this was blown, it may not be exactly perfect um, in its mold or how it's blown, the way it's stamped, slightly off-centered. So I'm going to select out of this case my entry bottles with the ring on the bottom centered, and then I'll do a quick inspection of them to make sure there's no visual defects in the glass that can be seen as well. Once I've selected my glassware, I'm going to take it, uh, run it through a sanitation uh, wash to get any uh, part particles or particulates in them uh, and let them dry completely before we do anything, uh, move into the bottling stage. Okay, so the next step after we've strained our honey, we've got our three blends of we mentioned, is we're going to test for moisture content. And ideally, as I mentioned before, being um, over 13.9 uh, and under uh, about 17.9 is ideally where you want to be. So the sweet spot being maybe 15% moisture content. We're going to use a refractometer. Uh, this is what we use to test our honey when we produce it or harvest it in the season. It's just a simple um, one. It has to be calibrated. We calibrated this um, with some uh, extra virgin you know, olive oil just so we could uh, make sure that it's calibrated right. We tested it, and um, it's kind of hard to show in the video, but the, um, the honey tested within the range. So uh, I believe this particular honey was on the uh, low end, so it was like 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9, 14.9,
Um, this one in the middle, which was more of an amber, tested a little bit around 15, and the light tested for about 15.1. So all within range of tolerance for the competition. So we don't need to test any further, but you definitely want to get one of these refractor mirrors. They're pretty cheap. You can go online. I'll put a link in the description below uh, that you can test your moisture content. Just make sure you calibrate it beforehand um, to make sure it, it's working properly. And then you can test your honey. So that's how we did that part. We're going to move along now to the uh, bottling part, please. Okay, so when filling your jars, we talked before earlier that you need to select the jar that you want. And we've already just pre-washed all these. We took them and ran them through our dishwash, dishwasher. Uh, got them very clean. They're free from dust. You can see I'm very limited on what I'm touching. What I'm doing now is I'm looking at the jar to inspect the jar to see if there's any major imperfections in the side of the glass. I don't want to select a glass that has a lot of pits and, and various things. I also like to see if I can find one where the the bottom is centered and not off centered. Some you can't help it with the selection. We're going to take the glass, set that on our scale. What we want to do here is make sure that we uh, zero out the scale and we get at least a pound. Um, so if we zero it now and we set our glass on it, our glass weighs 8.2 ounces. We're then going to select our lid. You need to expect the lid for any nicks or damages. Make sure it also looks clean or free from debris inside. Set that on your scale. 8.5 ounces is what you typically are seeing on a weight with a clean line jar with a lid. Um, we're then going to take, place the funnel that we're going to use to help pour it in on here. Now we're at 10.7 ounces, but we're gonna zero all that out. So the point of that is to try to get a pound of honey in this jar um, and up to the line. And the line we talk about, if we look at the line, we're going to use this line right here, that fill line. It should be just slightly above that fill line, not below it, so that when you put a cap on, you can't see any airspace, but it fills it that much. So that's our fill line right there. Okay, all of this has been cleaned ahead of time to make sure there's no dirt and debris on that. Um, Right, and this, this honey's been sitting out of the warming tank, so it's probably gonna pour like molasses in January, which is fine. Let's go ahead and start pouring. See what we got, we only need a few glasses, so. All right, so now we've reached a pound. Set that to the side. And you gotta be ready to pull this out. Get where you want it to be. Great. Let me pull that off. So right now, our line is perfect where we want it, just slightly above. And we're going to let that settle. We'll pour it 
or the next one. If you got anything down the side of the jar, try to wipe it off with a damp towel because a dry towel will leave air, leave a little bit of filament potentially on the side of the jar, cleaning it off. Okay, so this is our jar. We can see it's still got to settle a little bit, so we're going to go ahead and let it set it over here, and we'll work on the next one. Okay, so we've got four of these prepped. Ideally, you need to allow it to settle. You can see there's a lot of air bubbles that are still in that jar that need to settle up and any other uh, particulates that may rise. The last thing I do is I take a, a, dry, a wet cloth and I try not to put it over the lip because I don't want any of the you know, fuzz or anything to get in there. And I run it once and twice around the lip of the glass. I select my lid, looking for a lid that does not. So if you look at this lid versus this lid, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a ding in this lid. So I wouldn't use that lid. I would use this lid. Okay, it's clean. I'm gonna gently set that on top. Twist it just snug, seal it, not over tightening it. And then I'll do that with the rest of them. And then I take it over to my sink, my wet wash sink, and I rinse the whole bottle off completely to get any remaining pieces of fuzz or honey that's stuck to the side of it that may have spilled over. This just gets it ready to sit for a, about a day or two to settle. To let all the air rise to the top and any remaining particulates. Again, these are just steps that we take um, and trying to prepare our honey. We're just trying to kind of follow along, kind of learn as we go. We watched some videos, watched, I've read a couple books, and this is just the techniques that we've kind of gathered to be um, how we would want to do it in our show. This is why you buy a case, because you're likely not going to find perfect lids in every batch. They shouldn't have any dings on them. Okay. Now once the air settles, we're going to have to adjust for the level line as well. So again, it has to be above that line. So you don't see any airspace between the top of that bead and the cap. All right, let's go ahead and rinse these off and move to the next batch. Okay, so we've uh, bottled all our honey. We've got four for each um, shade of honey. What's the uh, clear or light, light amber, and then amber or dark. Um, our, uh, I can tell you our light is not as clear as I would like to see it. Our dark is not as dark as I'd like to see it. But these are all from our apiary from right here on the eastern shore of Maryland to get these three distinct uh, nectar colors in 2021 uh, was real. I was really proud of that. I was really proud of um, the fact that we could get that uh, amount of uh, unique harvests 
out of our small little apiary on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. So love the different color shades. We're going to put them in. We're going to enter three of the best jars. You make four so that um, when you get there, you know, you, you want to make sure that uh, you pick your best three out of the out of the four of each shade um, and enter those three. Uh, and then you'll receive a label and we'll talk to you about how that process works. We're going to continue this video to the Honey Show, show you what it's like to enter them in the Honey Show, what we do to finalize them and, and physically take them out of our hands, and then naturally the results. Uh, we do want to also test for weight. I know we did at the beginning. Sometimes it's easier to do at the end as well. If you have your, uh, your scale and it's at zero, you put an empty bottle and a lid on there, and you're going to get your weight of your, your lid and jar about 8.4 8 ounces, zeroed it at that point, okay? Take that off, stick the jar on, at least, it has to be at least a pound. There we go, one pound, 0 0.09 ounces. Perfect, right? One pound, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. One pound, 0 0.7. One pound, 0 0.7, right? So if I had to put them in there equally, you're going to take and put this one, set that down a little heavy, point seven, point six, point seven. These three right now are on the two in the running, point nine. This one keeps getting associated water on the, the scale. 0.9, So there we go. We got the three that I'll probably pick. This one's probably a little heavy. I'll take a couple dabs of honey out of it, bring it down so they're equally uh, full. We're going to try to get the each of the, each category, regardless of the category, equal in the amount that's in each bottle, as close to that one pound mark as possible. Uh, that's how we'll do it. So that's the last step in this. The next two steps are letting them settle doing a one quick pass across the top to make sure there's no particulates that floated to the surface. All the air bubbles have risen. We're gonna polish our jars, put them away, bring them to the show, and then we'll go from there. So on to the next step. Okay, so we've had our jars sitting for a couple days, letting any of those finer particulates and bubbles and air bubbles to settle. As you can see, if we just take a look at the particular one, it's fairly clean from the air bubbles. Uh, the question is, is that we've got to look under the lid before we completely seal it for comp and then submit it. So we're going to open that lid and if you look underneath, a couple things have happened, you know, moving them around, put some honey on the lid. So we've got to clean that off. And then you notice in here we've got some of the air bubbles and the finer. So you're going to take a clean, a clean spoon and you're going to run it along the edge, getting those little bit of remaining particulates, skimming the surface essentially. Try not to get them back down inside. Pull that out. And then you're going to get a clean jar. You'll seal that back up. Uh, I'm going to probably do another one more swipe along the back here just to get the remaining piece. You want it to be completely clean. Okay, our next step is to take a piece of press and seal or saran wrap and lay it over top of the jar before you put the clean lid on. This way it'll help keep the lid clean. You don't have to clean it when you get there. Um, but that's just another additional step to keep some of the particulates out, seal the top, keeping the honey from touching the, the bottom of the lid before you turn your honey in. All right, so we are here at the Honey Show, uh, the High Life Conference in uh, Sevierville, Tennessee. And we're getting ready to go take our honey entries down and enter them. We've got our gloves and some polishing cloths. We're gonna wipe down these glasses one last time, pull that um, off, pull the uh, saran wrap off. So to keep the, uh, make sure that the honey is not touching the inside of the uh, lid and we'll submit them for judging. Here we go. <music> Okay, 
So the last step is just taking our honey, bring it in here, put it in entry to uh, they tag it, and make sure that it's uh, mixing with everyone else's, and it'll be, uh, we'll see what happens. Here we go. All right, so this is what they're doing when they're judging. They're looking for the clarity. They're looking for various particles inside the, it's a very uh, specific process, so. Moisture. We'll let them get back to their job. Okay, so this is the black jar competition. This is strictly just taste. This is 100% uh, on taste and nothing else. They're going to divide the entries up by four uh, judges. They will select their top, you know, two or three. Give that to the final judge for a final determination of the the top seven. I believe they did in this category. Now for the results. All right, you got 20% on your moisture. It was 14.9, really thick honey. You got 15 points on granulation at a 20 available. You had some slight granulation, some very small crystals in there, which that I would be in this time of the naked year. Eye, yeah. Naked eye, you wouldn't see it. Okay. Uh, you got two points deducted for emphasis of lint, dirt, and wax. Okay. Uh, maybe a speck, a little tiny speck of wax or something. All right. In there. I don't remember. Accuracy and uniform level of fill, the jars were overfilled, a little oh, bit too okay. full, and one was slightly lower than the other. Okay. So, so that consistency, was the consistency and proper level. Got it. Uh, you got 20 points on freedom from air bubbles and from okay. the top was perfect. Perfect. Okay. I didn't have many like that. Maybe okay. only 10 out of a whole batch. Wow. And you got 10 points on uniform of color. Okay. That's, that's cool. He was tied for third. You got just a little sticky on the on the threads that makes the lid uh, you know a little harder to take off. I had one I couldn't even get off of one of the I hear the strain. Oh wow, okay. But if you get honey on those lids it's been on there a while, they get stuck. Right. And everything that, that's in here has to do with marketing and selling your honey. If you buy a jar of honey and the consumer takes it home can't get the lid, I'll send it behind. Absolutely, yeah. That makes sense. Well there you go. So that little bit of a tip that Rick gave us is that when you're looking at your honey, that little half a point separated from another another place potentially so that's a good point and that's good feedback we are back from hive life 2022 and uh, I can tell you that the uh, it's the Hive Life show was such an experience. The honey show, the speakers, the uh, the vendors, the engagement with all the other you know beekeepers, you know the YouTubers that are out there just collaborating. It was such a great experience. I can't wait to go back next year. Right? I didn't want to leave. Um, you know, we'll do some more videos on some interviews that we did at the show. But this is just to really wrap up our experience in the honey show. Uh, this was probably our first really kind of, we'll call it an official honey show. Um, it, we've entered into a local uh, honey show with our a local club in our area. We've entered into our state fair with our honey. And, you know, we've done all right. You can see we've got a few ribbons with, you know, some of that, uh, and those entries. But this was, a, in my opinion, the, re, the, the show that really helped me understand honey um, competitions and what I needed to do. I took all my, my reading and research and, and limited experiment experience and I, I did this video for everyone uh, coming from more of a novice perspective, right? So I was no way an expert at these honey shows. I've not been to tons of competitions. I really just took the pieces and parts that I felt were important that would get me to uh, at least be competitive, right? At least show off the product that I offer to my customers here locally and across the U.S. via my website, my honey and such. Uh, I had three good entries or really the black jar, a fourth entry. Um, and, and I was very proud of what we did to put this together and, and the outcome. You know, I didn't expect to win a ribbon. Um, I did win a ribbon. My light amber placed third or tied for third uh, in the competition amongst several other entries. So, you know, to have that was, was fantastic. The feedback that I got from Rick, Rick Sutton, who's been in many competitions, you know, and, and the, the larger honey shows, the national honey shows, you know, he's placed so many times blue ribbons in those larger shows. So to have him be able to judge this this Hive Life Conference Honey Show and give the feedback that they gave 
was was you know definitely uh, was critical in helping me kind of continue to develop. You know, will I continue to do some more honey shows? I may. Uh, it's not something we want to necessarily get too heavily involved in because it's definitely a steep competition. And um, looking at the scores, you know, we have received ninety points total on our light uh, or clear uh, uh, honey. We received uh, ninety four points tied for third on our light amber honey. And we received, you know, 87 or 88, really 88 points. Um, they had a tiebreaker uh, for our dark. So uh, our black jar did not place. Uh, there was really just a lot of competition in the black jar category. And, you know, it's really subjective the way they do it. But uh, again, that's, that's, that's how the competition works. You know, we've been to a, a black jar competition where it was sort of a people's choice. And there was a lot more voting and things. This was limited to four judges and you know, not sure if their palate was in tune with what was in this jar. We have a lot of people who really love our, our pumpkin or fall honey, uh, the pumpkin sunflower honey. So I was really shocked that that didn't really place high or at least place at all. It's a very unique taste and it just, you know, it just has depends on the palate of the person judging. So again, the black jar was so exciting just to be part of. The other competition was so exciting to be part of. You know, I really uh, learned a lot. Uh, I think the key takeaways for me uh, on my my preparation and the output or the outcome was the biggest takeaway was the fill and the lid and the cleanliness underneath the lid, meaning the, the honey you know that gets on the lid. One of the things that I didn't realize was when I put that saran wrap on my jars to keep the honey from touching the lid, right? It still touched the saran wrap. And with me moving around and traveling and going where we were, when I pulled that saran wrap off, I needed to give it another good clean wipe uh, before I put that lid on to get the stickiness. You know, Rick gave you some feedback you heard in the earlier in the video where it was tight to get the lid off. So if you went to turn it, it would stick a little bit. And if I pull them off now, it, it still looks clean. But if I touch it, I can touch the stickiness on the edge of that rim. And if I had I wiped that stickiness off, that could have been the difference between another level of uh, ward, whether it be you know a red or blue ribbon. Uh, he made a comment in the show that you know a lot of the entries had crystallization in them because of the late in the year, which was understood. You felt that ours, mine was pretty clean, free from debris. A lot of the scores reflect that. You know that was really the the fill, uh, getting that fill just slightly above the uh, that lip you see here was difficult for me to do, uh, not having done it in the past and just trying to not make a mess with honey everywhere. Um, I think I just needed to spend a little more time, be a little more patient in trying to make it consistent, right? Because they're going to look at all three jars, and if one's slightly higher than another, then that's going to be points deducted. And, you know, two or three points can be the difference. Um, what, from Rick's feedback, if I'm in the 90s on my scoring out of a 100-point scoring system, that's really good. So all that preparation, this long video that you've now arrived to the very end, you can see how we did. Um, I appreciate everyone following along. Uh, all that preparation was without, definitely not um, for naught. We, we learned a heck of a lot, and we're going to apply that to the next competition. Maybe next year's Hive Life Conference 2023, we might enter again and see how we do there with this little bit of feedback we received from Rick and the team there uh, at the Hive Life Conference. So thanks to everyone who allowed us to participate. Thanks for you for following along. Thanks for all of the support on our channel. Make sure you slam the subscribe button down here because we really want to grow our audience. We want to continue to share our information. You know, videos like this we think are going to be very helpful for people uh, on our experiences. As Mike says on his videos, uh, he doesn't teach you how to, how to do it. He just shows you how he does it, right? So it's not a how-to. It's really how we do it here at the Bohemian Apiary. Uh, so that's really what we like to do as well. Um, hopefully you can uh, comment below if you've ever been in a honey competition and if you have any feedback on how you've done it um, or anything along those lines. Uh, we we're very proud of how ours turned out. So thanks for following along. And remember, uh, beekeeping here at the Bohemian Apiary is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obsession. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great weekend.